the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of interviewing and highlighting some truly interesting people. Everyone who is anyone, both the famous and the infamous, from presidents and their first ladies to kings and queens, movie stars and pop stars, captains of industry, heads of state, sports personalities, innovative entrepreneurs, and some pretty fascinating everyday people. Today, I'm proud to introduce you to Mercedes Wilson, president of Family of the Americas Foundation, who has dedicated her life to uplifting and strengthening women and families worldwide. Mercedes, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to be with you. Wonderful. You know, um, normally we do these interviews one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but I understand that um, you are facing a bit of a health challenge at this time. Yes, I just got COVID, so I am taking care of it right now. And um, tell me how you're feeling, because before we talk about what you do for others, I want to make sure you're doing for yourself. <laughs> it's not that bad, actually. Uh, you just feel weak. Um, it's not that bad. Mercedes, I know what will make you strong is to talk about the thing that matters the most to you, the work that you're doing with Family of the Americas. What actually led you to start Family of the Americas? Well, um, you have to know that I am originally from Guatemala in Central America. Okay. And we traveled with my husband and lived in different places in the Middle East, in England. And then we were transferred to Australia, where they happened to be teaching a natural method to achieve or postpone pregnancy. Okay. And that got my interest because coming from Guatemala, where I come from, uh, a lot of people would benefit with uh, being able to either achieve or postpone pregnancy naturally, rather than with artificial methods of birth control that have so many side effects mm -hmm. to the people. So I learned this natural method there. And of course, when I learned it, it was kind of complicated. And I knew that I had to simplify the method so that people around the world, whether it was in Africa, Asia, or Latin America, were able to understand it. So I simplified the system. And when I, we were transferred back to the United States after two years in Australia, I started teaching in Guatemala. And I developed a very simple system for couples to learn and follow, to be able to know when they were fertile and when they were infertile. And it's that simple. And once you know your cycle and you can uh, get the methodology down, you can actually make family planning a part of your life. Of course, and it's so simple. You can learn it fast and you can put it into practice. And, and in fact, we just, finished a study on achieving pregnancy because there's millions of couples who have trouble conceiving. And we just did a study that was published and in the Catholic Social Science Review and the success rate with 54 couples was 81.4% success rate with couples who had trouble conceiving. That's really magnificent. Mercedes, I love um, missions of organizations that are serving the people. So can you tell me what are some of the core values of Family of the Americas? Well, it's quite unique in the sense that what you're doing is helping couples either achieve or postpone pregnancy without endangering their health. Mm -hmm. That artificial methods of birth control endanger the health of women. With artificial methods of birth control, they put women in, in a danger zone, mm. unnecessarily. Of course, it makes a lot of money for those who manufacture them, but they don't really tell them the dangers, the cancer, the heart disease, and well, it's a long list of side effects that artificial methods of birth control have. Whereas with the natural method, you have no side effects. You just learn and in, improve your knowledge, and then you will pass it on from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than that. 
How exactly can families incorporate the lessons of Family of the Americas into their everyday lives? Well, all you need is, is take a lesson. It won't take longer than half an hour mm -hmm. because most women have seen the signs of fertility, but they didn't know its significance because even the doctors don't tell women the significance. Okay. And many times we have to train doctors because they are ignorant in this too. So it's, it's just a matter of education. That's why I wrote my book mm -hmm. a long time ago. Uh, I've been in this work for 50 years now. And, and uh, my, I'm on my sixth edition of my book entitled Love and Fertility. And uh, it, it, probably the last edition that we have, it's, it's one of the best ones we've ever written. And I understand that uh, this book has been translated into more than a dozen languages. Yes, in 23 languages already. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, whoever wants to translate it, I allow them to do it. And I don't request anything for it. And, and how exactly do you spread the message of the organization worldwide? Well, we are at the mercy of the media mm -hmm. to interview me or are any of my teachers. And that's what I do is I teach and train different parts of the world, whether it's in Europe, Africa, Asia, Latin America, United States. And, uh, and that's what we have been doing. I teach and train. And, and then my teachers do the same thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that's how, we, that's how it has spread throughout the world. And I want to make sure that our viewers have the ability to connect. Um, and I know your website is familyplanning.net. And we are going to put that up so that the viewers um, can um, access this extremely important information. I'm just curious, Mercedes, what are some challenges that you face in your mission and how do you work to overcome those issues? Uh, there is a lot of challenges because I get very annoyed when I see the promotion of artificial birth control all over the world without the warnings. Mm -hmm. But it's a, a big money maker, mm -hmm. but they're making money at the expense of destroying the health of women and of couples mm -hmm. when it's not necessary it's just simple knowledge once you give it to women it stays with them for the rest of their lives and then they will pass it on to the new generations to their children since we're doing this interview in october and it's breast cancer awareness month can you discuss some of the ways women can protect themselves from cancer well i think one of the number one ways of protecting yourself from cancer and heart disease is to stop using artificial methods of birth control, which is a big money maker. The money makers don't care about, you know, the women's health. And we women do care about women's health. And they have been expanding their artificial methods of birth control all over the world, whether it's Africa, Latin America, Asia, Europe, US, you name it. it, it it's everywhere because mm -hmm. they have the means to promote it. But uh, unfortunately, they are very careful not to mention the serious side effects or they would lose their sales. And that what has been very unfair towards women. That is a message that I think all women across the world could certainly benefit from. And you've had the privilege of um, having an audience with some of our world's um, most philanthropic leaders. Will you share some of that with us? Yes, um, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, of course, was very interested in the work we were doing. She asked me to train her sisters and I have done as much as I can with them because they are all over the world in the poorest nations of the world and promoting this and uh, she was incredible 
Uh, she has been an example to the world with her generosity of giving so much of her time. So to me, she's one of my heroes. And of course, John Paul II also was very interested in the work we were doing. And uh, he, he knew that we were doing congresses for the family all over the world and they encouraged us to continue and even helped us financially to expand our congresses for the family in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, everywhere. I've been to China also many times, 13 times as a matter of fact, they have invited me to China. And of course I don't stop my message from warning them about the dangers of artificial birth control to their own people. And they became very interested in our natural method and they are offering it all over China. That is really magnificent, really magnificent. That is doing God's work in my opinion. So what is the one thing you'd like the viewer of this video feature to walk away with? That they have been taken for a ride. Mm -hmm. Women have been taken for a ride, taken advantage of. When there is a natural way that it only requires a few days of abstinence if they want to postpone pregnancy, and if they want to achieve pregnancies, God has placed certain signs, simple signs of a natural secretion that alerts us that we are in our fertile phase. And that's that simple. You want to conceive, you use those days. You want to postpone, you avoid those days. That's all there is to it. I and love how simple you make everything. <laughs> well, it is simple. Uh, and uh, it's just a matter of, presenting this knowledge but of course the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want this knowledge to be known because they would lose a lot of money but it's up to us women to make it known to other women and to the future generations it's that simple really. and that is what we have been doing here today i'm just so proud to be able to bring this method of natural family planning uh, to the masses uh, under these circumstances. I admire you so much for what you're doing and what you have done for five decades. Um, Mercedes, uh, families all across the world owe you a debt of gratitude and we thank you so very much. Well, thank you very much for the interview. I'm very glad that this is going all over the place and, and we need this kind of information to be shared all over to save young girls and women from the destructive practices that are being promoted just to make money. Thank you again.